1914, uh, Philadelphia Council started uh, service as their primary goal, and they presented uh, these pins as a campaign fund. Uh, there's only a couple of these known to exist, and uh, they were given out uh, by the Executive Council, and it began to, they, they began uh, the concept of service. This letter that was written by Cowing, who was the council exec, laid out that service has been the watchword during this year past, and it will continue to be the watchword into 1916. So what we believe happened is that in 1415, any program that uh, the Philadelphia Council was doing had to have some kind of a service feature. And so with the Weimacht and Dink beginning in 1915 at camp, service had to be one of the pieces of that. When you came into camp in 15, as a scoutmaster, you received a two-page document that outlined, as you see here, the schedule of camp honors, points, and awards. One of the individual honors is the highest honor will be conferred an Indian title, and the honor will be granted only to those scouts in camp who prove themselves exceptionally worthy by reason of some splendid demonstration of valor, personal service, or self-sacrifice. When camp was completed in 1915, the only person who received this individual honor was E. Erner Goodman, uh, who was the camp director, and the title that was given to him was Nuwingi. The second individual honor was membership in the Weimachtending, and before leaving camp, each troop will select by unanimous vote and approval of the Scoutmaster, the member of the troop in its ranks, who had been most helpful making their stay in camp a success. The name be transmitted to the Scoutmaster's Council, and after favorable action, the honor will be conferred at the ceremonial campfire. In 1975, uh, Unami Lodge decided that they wanted to create the uh, ceremony, uh, original ceremony from uh, July of 16, 1915. Phil Hitner, who's a good friend of mine, was the lodge chief at the time. But what's really crucial that you need to read here is that there is no script anywhere from 1915. In fact, there are no scripts available for any anywhere for the ordeal through the team. So what they presented was their view from what they saw and what they heard from those that were living at the time. And they have fragments of memory and uh, so on. But when we read the uh, report of the Committee on Ordeals and Ritual, the second paragraph says, it's understood that there were meddlesome outsiders who access to the ritual and became more or less familiar with it at Treasure Island during 1920. So it was decided to revise both the ritual for ordeals and the different degrees so that the knowledge thus illicitly obtained might be useless. And so what they decided to do is burn everything that was done in the team. And the recommendation was that uh, all copies should be destroyed and a pledge extracted from the holders of the copies never to allow it to be out of their possession for any purpose. So they early on made a decision that uh, they, if once they changed the rituals, that they were to be destroyed. And only three copies were made available to the new lodges that were coming on board. The ritual committee, one for Medeu, who was the council executive, and one for Sakima, who was chief of the lodge and usually the camp director. This is a copy of the work of that was done in 1975, when Phil Hitner wrote the letter that was the cover letter. This is just the first page, but what it does is it identifies for us who the characters were that uh, played the ceremony. And so Medeu was the council executive. Uh, Sakima was Goodman, camp director. Sachem was a name that was reserved only for Carol Edson, and he was the assistant camp director. The guard was Harry A. Yoder, and the medicine man was Lyle. 
likely William Hinkle, who was known to be one of the authors of uh, the ceremonies in the teens and in the 20. When they reenacted the uh, experience in 1975, uh, this is the group that did it, and Goodman was there, and uh, the word is that he approved what they had done. Maybe one of the oldest original pieces that I have uh, of the ceremonies is this triangle that was worn on Goodman's uh, robe and robes beyond that. I secured this from a person from Unami Lodge, and this is an original from uh, the 20s at the very least and maybe earlier. Harry Yoder uh, was uh, uh, on staff at Treasure Island in 1915 and eventually uh, became a vigil and eventually became the lodge chief. Uh, and when he was asked his memory of what happened, uh, this tells you that was on the letterhead when he was the chief. And by the way, the picture is the uh, lodge building on Treasure Island that was built by the lodge where everybody made contributions, 25 cents, 50 cents or whatever. And then they built this and it was still on the island when the camp was closed. But in 1920, Yoder was the chief and he was the guardian of the trail on that first ceremony in July 16. Now his memory is this. The first ceremony took place July 16, 15. It was a great day on Treasure Island. And up to this time, the organization organization of the order had been shrouded in secrecy, and Mr. Goodman had only taken into his confidence those who were to take a definite part in the work, and even they were more or less mystified. Goodman and Edson, then the assistant director and other members of the staff, took the various parts attired in long black robes with totems on their breasts. It was my good fortune to be the guide and guardian of the trail. There were two candidates that night, Robert Craig, Gilpin Allen. Now, his memory is that that the early candidates were handed a bundle of sticks and told to break it. And after each had tried and failed, the chief, who was Goodman, took the bundle and separated the sticks, broke them one at a time with ease. And as a second lesson, each scout was told to encircle a large tree with his arms. And after each had failed, they were instructed to join hands and thus the encircled the tree. In this way, the scouts were taught that in union there is strength and to accomplish their purpose, we must go hand in hand. In the early days of the order, the members wore a black sash with a white stripe running lengthwise instead of the white band with the red arrow. Now, I want you to remember what I've just shared with you. This is Yoder's view of what happened. Goodman in 1925, in a memo to Horace Kern, who asked the question about the beginnings of the Weimachtan Day, he suggested the chief of the fire wore a totem that was uh, uh, the totem of Unami Lodge superimposed on a triangle, which was a sign of leadership. And the vice chief of the fire, later known as Powwow, but then, as I remember, called Sachem, wore the totem them as an emblem. So that triangle that I shared with you, Goodman affirmed in his memory. He said the, the ritual is simple and uh, there were two parts. There was the open part where everybody went through that was going to go through. And then later, whenever no one was around, they those kids were shared the meaning of what they had gone through. And his memory was that there were three things the encircling of the tree, the scaling of an elevation. And then he says his third step was somewhat faulty in his memory, but he thought he remembered that they were expected to place a stick upon the council fire to make it burn more brightly. So that brotherhood was the tree, service was the helping of the person up the elevation, and the cheerfulness was the fire burning brighter because of what was added to it. Nobody knows, but nobody knows when which of these two is accurate? Most would like to believe that it's Goodman's recollection, but when you have Yoder also recollecting something a bit different and without having anybody left and without any written documentation, we have two possibilities for what happened in that first night and then on down the road. After camp was over, Goodman and Edson spoke and they decided that they wanted to continue the Weimachtan thing. So they sent out this letter to 
all of the 23 young men who had been inducted through the camp that summer and invited them to go to Camp Morrell in November for a reunion, followed by a business session and initiation ceremonies after supper will constitute the program. Endeavor to be on hand and bring supper with you. And it was signed by Nwingi, Chief of the Fire, and Edson Sachem. Nine kids showed up for that meeting, and uh, Edson's written this letter in July of 1968 when he was asked a bit about the beginning. And in that letter, he states what happened at Morrell how it all began, where the name came from, that it was a simple ritual, and that the Morel experience was one of the highlights of his life. And during that time, he suggested they formed a committee on constitution bylaws, on ritual, and insignia, and regalia. And the third committee was one on membership. And then by the summer of 16, uh, they met elected officers and started the organization. And the ritual committee at that point put into place the ritual that would begin to be used in 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Now, we do have one ritual from the original time. This is the ritual of the second degree. It was written by Hinkle on his typewriter, and this has got a title page that says Original Manuscript. And it's this one that gives us the names of the characters, Medeu, Nutecat, Medeu, you, um, uh, Olympia, Olympia Peas, uh, Pow Wow, and the Medicine Man is not on here, but shows up later. So from this document, they were able to get the idea, there's Medicine Man, that, that was able to get the five characters uh, that were done in the original. Sachem was there because that was Edson, but later Sachem became Pow Wow, and Pow Wow was the assistant camp director. And at the end of the ritual, second and ritual. This was the obligation. I, having been initiated into the rites and mysteries of the first degree in the Wimokdadink, do now seal my membership in the order by accepting the obligations of the second degree, namely to preserve in secrecy the signs and symbols of the order which I have learned or about to learn, to be faithful in attendance upon the sessions of the lodge, earnest it's in support so far as I'm able, and to accept the arrow not only as my guide to loyalty and brotherhood and cheerfulness and service, but as a token of my responsibility to point out to others the way a real happiness and success in life. And to the fulfillment of these obligations, I pledge my life, my ambitions, and my scout honor. 